Hi everyone, welcome back to an all new episode of Retro Tech. I'm Steve and today we're looking at CRTs again. Today we're going to be talking about CRT safety, specifically on a CRT that is a consumer grade television. So lastly, I want to see if this is a good television to possibly RGB mod. It only has RF and composite inputs right now, so it would be a great candidate if it's possible to add RGB to this so then it's not so uh, useless pretty much in today's world. Okay, so let's take a closer look behind the CRT before we open it up. This is just a brief look at the behind the TV. Here's the model number on this specific one, TXD1972, manufactured in January of 1997, and Samsung, and like I say, the inputs down here on the back are very standard. Um, actually, it's only got a one of the composite video uh, connectors, looks like it's been ripped out of it, and then we just have the RF, and then there's composite and mono audio in the front. So let's go ahead and remove the shell now and take a look in the back. All right, so before we go too much further, let's just talk about something that we need to make sure we've done. First off, make sure you've unplugged the television. And uh, this thing was turned on yesterday, so it's been full 24 hours since it's been turned on. I, I just recommend waiting about a day for the first uh, time you open your CRT. You know, if you've never opened it before, it's always good to just unplug it and let it sit for a full day. Okay, I've removed the back of the TV. Now this is again the very first time I've opened this television and you can see right away this is just filthy. It's covered in all kinds of dust and just sediment from probably 20 years of sitting and never being opened. I hope you can see on the camera but there's just inches of dust and buildup on here so this is a really good example of what I wanted to show on the back of a CRT and the reason behind opening this even if you're not doing anything else it's good to come in here and inspect I mean, there's so much dust on this board down here that if you were to use this for a long time you would probably heat up these components this dust would uh, probably cause something to either fail um, it could burn up and stink a lot so this is a perfect example of why you'd want to get in here in the first place to clean out the CRT. But before we do that, we want to make sure we go through the safety precautions and we do the right things to make sure we're safe. Okay, so as you can see, like I said, just tons of filthy dirt and dust. I really want to clean that off. And uh, so before I go ahead and do that, I want to make sure this is just completely safe and to do that, I need to discharge the CRT. Now, uh, some people you know, say you don't really need to do this, but let's just go ahead and do it to be safe on this. Let's just assume this is the very first time we've ever gotten inside a CRT. So let's go ahead and discharge this. And uh, before we do that, though, let's talk about a little bit of personal protective equipment. There is some personal protective equipment you can use while working with electronics. First example would be gloves. And these are some highly rated uh, industrial strength electrical gloves, uh, rubber insulated gloves. I'll show them off here. These did come from Granger and they were about $70, but they're available through any uh, they're available through any store that may sell safety equipment online. So Amazon, eBay, all places like that will have something like this. But these are specially made and they're not hugely thick, but they do feel weird. They're a specific type of rubber, and they are rated up to a certain voltage. And so this is a good set right here. Again, these were about 70 US dollars for these gloves after all the uh, discounts I got for ordering them. So what you can do is actually wear these gloves, and then it's recommended to even go further than that. And these were just about a $20 pair of uh, nice leather gloves. And I, you can actually put these on the outside of the red rubber gloves and then you have double protection for your hands and when you're sticking it inside a CRT. If, if you just need the extra, um, you know, if, if this helps you get over any kind of fear and makes you feel some more secure, then please don't, uh, you know, please go for it. It's not, it's not that bad. If you're going to do a lot of work on this stuff, it helps you get over your fears. Um, then I say, you know, it's always better to be safe than sorry. 
Another thing to think about is the kind of clothing you're wearing while you're working on this stuff. If you want to be um, protected additionally, it's good to wear some you know, tight sleeves. Now, I'm not saying this cotton material is perfect. It would be nice to have something that was maybe a little thicker in canvas. So something that's tight on your arm under that glove and at least something that will uh, protect your skin from direct contact on something, that can help out too. Always, too, when you have your hand inside a TV if, or any other electronics that has power going into it, only work with one arm or hand at a time. Uh, keep the other hand in your pocket. It's called the one-hand pocket rule. So just use your work hand and keep your other hand in your pocket while you're doing the work. And that way you're never going to ground something through your chest area, uh, which can really cause damage to your heart. Back here behind the CRT. Look at this uh, spring right here. This is part of our ground loop on the CRT. And this right here is our degauss coil cable, but this one is directly attached to the ground loop on the entire CRT television. So that's where I'm gonna connect my end of my discharge cable. It's probably right in that loop connection area or over here um, on the cable. That way I have a good spot, just easy to connect to the ground of the whole TV. Now I've gotten my discharge tool and it's connected over here to the ground spot I told you about. And for today's demonstration, I am going to wear the gloves. So what you're going to try to do now is just take the end of your discharge tool, uh, which will then send the electricity from anything that's built up in that tube over to the ground. And you should, uh, you know, just maybe sometimes you hear a pop. Maybe we'll be lucky and we'll hear a pop when we do this, but not always. So. I don't even mind flipping that up so you can actually see the anode, but I'm, I'm, I'm physically touching it a couple times. Now that I've touched it, I can let it sit for five minutes and I'll come back and repeat the process. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. I've come back here and I'm going to go ahead and do the same process of just slipping this under there and discharging that to make sure there's no current running in it. I don't hear anything. So it's good to go. Okay, so now that I've safely discharged this CRT, I'm going to go ahead and remove my CRT ground cable. And then we're going to go and use some brushes and get a lot of this dust off here. I've seen other videos where people have used uh, cleaners and sprayed it. Uh, I'm not going to let, I don't have enough time to let this sit. It's really cold in my area, so I'm afraid that any water may uh, freeze or something if I let it get into any kind of electric, electrical component. So we're just going to use compressed air and uh, brushes to get a lot of this dirt out. I know also people get concerned about capacitors and maybe getting shocked. The only other uh, area that's of concern right now would be where the larger capacitors are down here, but they're on the bottom of the board. And uh, they're not really any danger unless I was taking this out because you, uh, you can't get shocked by the top of the capacitors. So those aren't going to be really any hazard. There's no large capacitors at all on this board. Uh, I don't even see maybe one capacitor on this entire board back here for the neck board on this TV. So there's no real danger there. Just be mindful still of the anode cap area as occasionally uh, energy can still be built up in your CRT tube. And if you were to um, take that out, and there might be a chance that you could get some electricity come off of there. But that's very rare, and you're fine if you leave the anode cap left in. So um, there are special brushes you can use, but honestly, I found that a good high-quality paintbrush that it doesn't have paint on it, of course, but um, one that has nice bristles that are tough that are not going to uh, damage anything either, kind of soft also does a really great job of just brushing a lot of that dust off the top. And that's what I really like to use because it gets in between things safely and it doesn't leave anything behind. So that's just a little tip. Uh, now you can use a elect electrical brush so you don't short anything out when you get around uh, the boards and things. But most of the time this will do fine on a CRT. Oh man, so take a quick look back here at this board with me. This is why you have to get in here and just inspect your CRT after you get it. 
make sure you clean it. Just look at this enormous amount of dust built up on these capacitors. And these are the important capacitors that will affect your geometry and everything, you know, if um, and all this excess buildup will just act as a uh, as a heat uh, insulator, sorry, a heat insulator and it will wear these parts out because heat will build up quicker in them and they're already um, over 20 years old. So it's a really great idea to get in here and get as much of this stuff off as possible. Um, even the flyback over here. Let's let's pan around and look at that too. Yeah, okay, just disgusting. All kinds of dirt and dust. So what am I, I don't know, I'm going to try to do some more cleaning on this thing. But um, if you notice, this flyback is just filthy. So let's get it cleaned up and uh, see how the soot around these adjustments. This does have focus adjustment and a brightness adjustment on the bottom. And um, so that's important to note. Oh, and even inside the shell is just absolutely filthy if you're looking up here around the front. So this thing has um, years and years of soot and nastiness built up on the inside. It, raised, it could use a full disassembly and extreme cleaning. So maybe we'll do that in a future video. But for now, let's just get it cleaned up enough to continue talking about safety on it. Okay, so one more thing to look at here is this cable that's going from the flyback and it's part of the anode cap. And just look at how much dust is on that. Let's be simple, easy, wipe down. And actually, it's just so black, it's not coming off. So this one's got some extra soot in it. It's not so that's not actually that bad. It looked really nasty, but it's not actually on there. The dust is it's pretty well off that cable. So let's go ahead and start looking at some of these areas on here. Again, this anode cap is a, a very dangerous spot on the CRT. Just be mindful of that, okay? And anything attached to that. So you've got your anode cup, you've got your cable, and then you've got that going down to the flyback. So let's just start with this cable. It's good to inspect this cable, make sure there's nothing wrong with it, no splits, nothing while it's discharged, make sure the connection's still good down here at the flyback and everything. Uh, because this cable, you know, it's doing it's gonna be sending all the electricity into the back of the tube. Uh, the second area to watch out for on the back of all this is on the yoke assembly, which is this area right here. Uh, it's this white ring all the way up to this. Okay, so we're talking about the yoke assembly again. That's this area between this white portion and this little screw right here. And this is what you can adjust. Uh, you can undo this screw a little bit and then you can adjust this left or right if you have a yoke problem where you may have a screen that's tilted or something. That's what the problem is, is this yoke is tilted somehow. And you can just loosen that up and tilt it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times you have to do that while the CRT is running, so I do need to be mindful of these points right here. This and this point and these three points right here on the back of this plastic. On CRTs like this, standard televisions, these are usually exposed and can be shock points. So do not tap into these points right here. Be just mindful of that because uh, there is current going there and if you ground it out there, you could shock something. So don't do that. Let's go down here and look at this area. These are our convergence rings, which on a standard television, most of the time to adjust convergence, you have to move these rings around. Hopefully that's not a problem on your TV because that's one of the hardest things to adjust. I won't be doing that in this video and I don't recommend that unless you're highly skilled and have a lot of equipment so you can get it right. Okay, so when you're working back here, sometimes you might have to come back to this flyback. And this is where the electricity is generated going to the tube and it's it's coming from this uh, flyback right here. So occasionally, now this one's still dirty, but occasionally you'll have to come in here and, and spin these potentiometers. And um, you see they're, they're threaded, so you can use a screwdriver in there. So if you use a screwdriver with a plastic handle, you'll be fine. You can turn those clockwise and counterclockwise and it'll actually increase your screen brightness with this bottom one. And this top one will increase your focus. So if it's a blurry screen, this is how you fix that. Okay, so at the other end of the CRT, we got most of our stuff that's pretty harmless. Now again, I said this thing's broken. 
So um, we may be able to just remove this whole piece and insert a SCART input right here. And then we could wire up RGB, but this right here is the RF tuner. And then back here we've got our chips that I'm sure is our, um, you know, some kind of processor for menus and everything. And then running the, and then we've also got the jungle chip. So we should be able to insert a um, RGB signal into that, and that will come up in a uh, future video. And we'll also replace a lot of these bigger bad capacitors, and then we'll talk about how to be safe around those. Um, some other things to note on here, these areas with shielding uh, can get very hot, so be mindful of that. And there's no reason to come down here and touch down here where they could have a lot of electricity going through. But just be careful of that if you ever have to come back here and work on it while it's running. All right, so if you're brand new to CRTs again, just be mindful of the things that are dangerous inside one before you go poking around in it, really. And if you have been working on it a while, then maybe this just refresh some of the areas on the CRT that um, are hazardous. Uh, just remember that the best reason to get in here would be basically to clean it off at least first, initially, if you just pick up a CRT and you don't even plan to mod it. It's always great to clean it off and that way um, you could prevent any kind of problems from maybe happening. Um, the next thing would be if you needed to make an adjustment on your screen brightness or your focus or your convergence. Uh, everything else would be done through the service menus so a lot of times you don't even need to open this up if you just need to fix something with geometry on your CRT TV. Uh, the only other reason you might want to get in here is if you're going to do a capacitor replacement which is a good idea on a 20 year old television. And, and then what I'll probably do is take it apart, uh, clean it heavily, and RGB mod it. Okay, so just be sure to look for that in the future. Make sure you have uh, subscribed and that you've got the bell notification turned on. I've still got the other CRTs that have been RGB modded and the videos done for those before. So if you're just coming to the channel, please make sure you go check on um, the old videos too. Uh, I'm Steve. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech. Uh, please leave any comments or questions below. Have a wonderful day.